How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcagno, and I'm a first year family medicine resident. And I just got to say straight out the gate that the first year of residency so far has flown by. So much so that it wasn't until recently that I realized that it's almost been an entire year since I was getting ready for my residency interviews. And the only reason why I knew it all is because lately I've been speaking with a few medical students that are getting ready to graduate, but before that are getting ready for the CARMS interview process. If you're down in the States, getting ready for their interviews as well. Now, for those of you that don't know, medical residency interviews are a really big deal for medical students. There was a big deal for me last year, stressed me out, stressed out a lot of my friends and colleagues that were also applying. And it's not just because you have to worry about what program you're gonna match into in terms of specialty, and then that's gonna be the career for the rest of your life, but also it determines, depending on what program you match into, where you're going to be located geographically for the next two to seven years, depending on your program. And that's why so many people, we spend weeks getting ready for these interviews. So now with the next generation of medical students getting ready for their residency interviews, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what the interview process was like for me. And that's why in today's video, I'm gonna to react to another video by Dr. Glockum Fleckham. I love his videos, you guys love his videos, but if you wanna see me do some more of these reactions in the future, let me know, he's hilarious and he has a really good pulse on what medicine and the medical education system is like in a lot of cases. But we'll check out his take uh, on this particular, this is how to ace your family medicine residency interview. I'm gonna start off by liking it, so shameless plug. And if you have any other particular questions or comments or anything you wanna know from me, feel free to put that down in the comment section below as well. So we are going to quickly start this video from the beginning. Morning, I'm here for the interview. Huh? Oh, you're hired. Excuse me? Okay, we're gonna stop it right there for a second. We're gonna comment first on the medical student's outfit for the interview. Very important, people take notes if, if you wanna know. But the hair, we'll start from the top. It's well kept. You're showing the interviewers that you've had a shower recently as a medical student, that's very impressive. But it's also short. You're showing them that in the morning, you don't have a lot of time to get from your bed to the hospital because you've probably been up all night studying and that's why you keep it short because you don't have a lot of time to do things in the morning. Now, the stubble, I like the beard action. You haven't really been in a clinical setting for that long really. So anything you could do to show them that you have a little bit more experience, the beard tends to fool the patients a lot when you're a med student and it helps you get by. I would recommend any sort of stubble to the interview if you can. The outfit I love. I wore two different outfits to my interviews. I did blue on blue, and I also did black on black. The black on black is classic. If anyone has any questions about what you should be wearing that day, you really can't go wrong with that one. Now, by contrast, we look at the family medicine doctor, and yeah, this is, this is not what they looked like on my interview day. Everyone that I spoke to that day looked very professional. The doctors that they choose for these interviews, you have to think, um, you volunteer, you don't get paid to be an interviewer in many cases, or at least they weren't gonna pay me when they tried to recruit some residents to help out for the interviews too. These doctors had the day off. You Most likely if you were in clinic, it was only for the first half of the day. Maybe you're gonna go later on at night, depending on what your responsibilities are. But uh, I love the way he portrays family medicine doctors only because at least in my experience, none of my preceptors have ever looked like that and, and they're not usually this stressed out. Yeah, you can have the job. Well, don't you want to make sure I'm the right candidate first? Um, uh, okay. How many patients do you want to see? As many as possible. How many different diseases do you want to manage? As many as possible. How much respect do you want to get for doing the most difficult job in medicine? As little as possible. What do you think a typical work day looks like for a primary care doctor? That part always gets me, the whole walk into a family medicine interview and oh, you're, you're hired because we need you guys. It doesn't actually work that way. But I'm also not gonna pretend that family medicine interviews don't have their perks. I, going into my family medicine interviews, felt that I had a very strong application. And if you were a family medicine gunner, I bet you feel kind of similar in many cases. Really, I wasn't too concerned whether or not I was gonna match family medicine, which is a really nice feeling, by the way. What I was gunning for at that point is can I get my number one school, which is the school that I'm at right now. So it would have been nice to walk in and them to, to just tell me, hey, you're here, don't worry about the rest of your interviews, but that doesn't work out that way. And all this other stuff about how much money do you want to make? How much respect? The hardest job in medicine. I've talked about family medicine extensively and I disagree with Dr. Glockham Fleckham on a lot of this stuff. Some of you might disagree with me, but I love my job in family medicine. Some of my preceptors that I work with have been doing it for a very long time. Uh, in speaking with them, many of them are very financially stable and a lot of them really like their job. Does everyone like their job? No. Do we need family medicine doctors? Yes. 
Is this what you're gonna see on YouTube today? Probably not, but if you do, at least you're prepared. Fitting 12 hours of appointments into eight hours, then going home and charting until I fall asleep at my computer. You're perfect. Well, that's great, but don't I need to go through the match? Oh, we don't use the match anymore. Family medicine. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. A few things to talk about here. Yes, on your interview, you want to sell yourself as a hardworking applicant, but at the same time, just general advice, we're going to be serious for a second. On your interview day, number one, you're selling yourself as hardworking. Number two, you're selling yourself as someone that has learned things from patients and your experiences and your preceptors. But number three, you got to sell yourself as a team player, someone that takes care of themselves and someone that's not going to fail on their teammates when they need you most. And if you're not someone that's taking care of yourself, yes, you're gonna go through difficult periods throughout medical school, but you don't wanna sell yourself as a workaholic. I think that's a negative. If I was gonna be interviewing someone and they told me that all they do is work, I probably wouldn't like that too, too much. Now, in terms of what is your ideal family medicine day, I can tell you about my day today it was really nice. Uh, I woke up at like six o'clock in the morning. I was at the long-term care uh, for eight o'clock, seeing patients there. I saw patients in long-term care till about one o'clock. And then I had afternoon clinic from like one to five. It was a very nice day. There was a lot of variety there. That is a pretty typical day. Sometimes I do more clinic than long-term care. Sometimes there's an eMERGE shift, depending on your rotation. There's so much you could do in family medicine. And be sure to talk about that, the different variety. That, that's a plus of family medicine. And that could be some insight that you have if you're gonna go for this interview. Don't I need to go through the match? Oh, we don't use the match anymore. Family medicine moved to a dibs system a few years back. Oh, okay. Well, when do I start? Right now. Here are some patient phone calls. What? And some medication refills. Okay. And some prior authorizations. Don't you have someone that does all this for you? I wish. I wish you had someone that could do all this for you. And you could. We could talk about that more in the future. Dibs system on where you could go for residency. I wish. That'd be awesome. What, what I can say, changes to the residency interviews. Things are done online now. A lot of Zoom, a lot of Kira talent and other things that they're doing for residency interviews. You save a lot of money not needing to fly across the country. Um, I think the average resident will save somewhere around $10,000 here in Canada by just doing everything online, not having to actually book flights and hotels. Personally, I liked the in-person aspect of interviews. I do think that we are losing something now by not being able to see the applicants in front of you, but you, you got the good and the bad. Paperwork is the bane of existence for any doctor. Any doctor, if you ask them what the worst part of their day was or the most monotonous part of their day, it's the paperwork. There's a lot of paperwork in family medicine, but there's a lot of paperwork in other specialties too, depending on what you got going on would be nice if we had someone that could cover for you. You could hire people and outsource billing, for example, and a few other things too. It subtracts from your bottom dollar. It's a necessary evil. I get why we have paperwork. Can I find a way to, to, to limit it in the future? Probably not, but I'm gonna try my best anyways. Oh yeah, L let me check. Oh yeah, uh, our money tree still isn't making any money. Oh, I see. Anyway, welcome to Family Medicine. It's great to be here. And that's a solid way to end your interview. That last line, the whole, it's great to be here. You gotta show these people that you are enthusiastic about the specialty and there's so much to be enthusiastic about when getting into family medicine. Yeah, the, the part about the money tree, I, I wish our money tree grew as well. And, and, and that does hint at, I will say that I've spoken to many different preceptors right now and the, the whole lack of money is something that remains a constant sometimes across the specialties. I'm starting to see more and more that you never really are in a position where you feel confident with how much money you have. And yes, some family medicine doctors are making way less than some other specialists, for example. But by comparison, I've also had many preceptors that are very wealthy and have managed their money very successfully. Anyways, back to the interview thing. What I will say here, the focus and the takeaway and the last part of your interview, in many cases, it is not unreasonable to think that an interviewer can ask you something along the lines of, where do you see your career going in the future? Five years, 10 years? And the enthusiasm and the excitement for the specialty is how I would choose to answer that question. And I'm glad that he ended it off like that. But I'm gonna end the video here because uh, we rambled a bit, but this was, this was basically a reaction and a tutorial 
on how to successfully ace a family medicine interview with myself and Dr. Glockham Fleck. And if you guys liked it, let me know in the comment section below. We'll see you all in the next one. Everyone take care. Oh, wait a second. You could always tell them the joke. Last tip. You could tell them the joke if it comes up. Depend know your audience, okay? A uh, preceptor told this to me when I first started off in medical school. A lot of family doctors like it. Uh, the saying goes, that it is the job of a family medicine resident to learn as much as is possible about a very large variety of different things that you see in medicine. Whereas by contrast, and the reason why you're not going into a specialty is because it is the job of a specialist to learn more and more about less and less until eventually they learn absolutely everything about nothing at all. Okay, tell them I sent you, tip your waitress. We'll see you guys next time, everyone take care.